cloudiness. 41 right now and mostly sunny. WNYC AM 820 at 306. Here we go. Ooh, just like that, huh? <laughs> Welcome to New York Beat here on AM 820 WNYC. I'm your host, Dara Wells. I'll be with you for two hours, as we always are, Monday through Friday from 3 to 5 in the afternoon. And have we got a terrific show today. We are starting, <laughs> We're starting with a little kazoo music. Yes, <laughs> he is Wally Amos. Uh, he is really, if Thanks, you buddy. will, the father of the gourmet cookie industry. He used to have this other company. Can I say the name? Oh, sure, but only say it once. Famous we don't Amos. want to repeat it, you know? <laughs> so you were talking over me, so I better say it again in case they didn't hear it. it was... No, they don't need to hear okay, it. Okay, they don't need to hear if it. Well, missed, that's you know bad. the one. You're right. Yeah. You're right. But he's got another company now and a new book. And I'll tell you, this is a story that you would not believe. Uh, Wally started as the stockroom manager uh, in the shoe department at Saks Fifth Avenue. Well, actually, in the supply department. Oh, I started, excuse me. I started as a clerk, not yeah. as a manager. I started as a, I was just up there. I was just up at Barnes & Nobles. I did a book signing. Yeah, up oh, here's the book. Okay. Man, man, man with no name. Uh-huh. I did a book signing up there, and, and so it was so interesting. As a matter of fact, I started to talk off by saying, you know, this is familiar ground for me because... <laughs> In 1957, I worked across the street. The Christmas uh, holiday of 57, I was in the, in the supply department as a stock clerk unloading trucks on 59th Street in the cold, in the snow. And then I was, you know, now I'm back here signing a book at, at Barnes & Nobles, and we had over 100 people there. I broke the record for that little uh, um, uh, lunch uh, seminar thing that they do. So it was wonderful. Heady stuff. But, you know, you have always worked from the bottom yes. to the top. In any yes. job you did, you started, what, in the mailroom I of William Morris Agency? Started in the mailroom at William Morris. Even before that, mm -hmm. I worked at the, you know, I went, I went to school not far from here. Where'd you go? At Food Trades Vocational High School. At that time, it was on 13th Street. All right, down the village. Uh -huh. And then, um, so <clears throat> while going to school there, I worked at um, the Essex House Hotel. They had a program where you work a week and go to school a week. The week that I worked, I worked in the pantry at the Essex House Hotel. I've always worked, you know. I know, you always yeah. have. Now, you, mm -hmm. Wally, you are not going to remember this, but you and I have actually met about 20 years ago. See, I knew you wouldn't remember Dara, this. 20 years ago? Yeah, 20 years well, ago. Well, you're a little baby. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It was one of my first jobs in broadcast. Uh -huh. I was working for a CBS station in Los Angeles, uh -huh. and I had this show, uh, an interview program. Right. Uh, not as good as this one, mind <laughs> you, but, but you were one of my favorite guests. And oh, at that goodness. time, you had just gone into making cookies. At, yeah. It was a hobby for you. You, well, were, you were this high-powered superstar agent. You had Simon and Garfunkel. Uh, you, uh, had, uh. you had the Supremes. You mm -hmm. had everybody. Mm -hmm. But you said that it was sort of a hobby, and you decided to start making cookies. Started and you brought it. in... Those cookies. Those other cookies. Those yeah. other cookies. Today, Today I bring in, in these cookies, cookies. the Uncle No Name Cookie Company. Um, but you know, it was almost 20 oh, was years, ago, 20 years but, ago. Well, because I started uh, the other company uh, March 10th, 1975. I know that because <laughs> I interviewed you not long after. All right, so let's talk about now. Okay. You, your story is incredible. You've been down, you've been up, you've been down again. I've been down, I've been up, I've been all How around. How on earth does a man lose all licenses? rights to his own name because you're making cookies now and this is the uncle no namey cookie company well no name no name um, but uh, it means a partial loss of legal name yeah, yeah. yeah. How, right, right. how did that happen but, you but, hear here i see you on every cookie package uh that i see in the store no more my, no, no, no no more it, no but back but then, back then right and yeah. suddenly you can no longer use your name yeah, i cannot use the name wally amos nor my likeness for any food related businesses how did that happen? Well, it happened because I made some mistakes along the way. I wasn't responsible. Uh, when I formed Famous Amos, I was busy promoting because that's what I do. And I never really took the time to put together um, a strong management team. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, uh, we got in trouble. And um, uh, after 10 years, uh, from 75 to 85, I mean, you know, we were up, we were down, but down. And, and it, it just collapsed on me. Because cash flow got crazy. We didn't have a good infrastructure. We didn't have a good management team. And so from 85 till 89, uh, there were four different owners. 88, there were four different owners. With each ownership change, my equity became less and less. And right. so finally I had nothing left. Couldn't get along with the guys that finally bought the company. And I said, hey, see you later. I'll go do something else. 
And what you did, though, is you started to produce cookies again yeah. using your name, this which is you're my name. entitled to do. I mean, it is your name, and after all. they said, uh-uh. don't you do that, Wally. Yeah, they sued, you, <laughs> they sued me um, in, in 91. I started a company called Wally Amos Presents Chip and Cookie, which was a merchandising concept around um, two little cookie dolls that my wife, Christine, created. And so uh, Famous Amos sued me, said they own my name and likeness. I said, okay, guys, <clears throat> you keep the name. And I know how to make cookies. I know how to promote cookies. You don't need a name to sell cookies. You need a cookie to sell cookies, fellas. And so I formed the Uncle No Name Cookie Company. Seven months after I was sued, Dara. You know, so life. But listen, that's the message. The subtitle to my book is Turn Lemons into Lemonade. And that's it. You know, uh, challenges come your way. But they're simply opportunities in disguise. And if you can maintain uh, a strong, positive outlook on life, if you can maintain a strong faith in God, you know, a strong faith in yourself, in the God in you, and just persevere and stay focused. You know, keep your mind on what you want and off of what you don't want. You know, focus on answers and solutions, and that's, that's, that's what you'll come up with. Then, then you'll be okay. That's all I did. You're more than okay. Our guest is Wally Amos. If you would like to talk to him, you can by calling 212-267-WNYC, 267-9692. Wally is making cookies again. Not a lot to Wally's <laughs> back in the cookie business. What else doing besides writing books, making cookies? And well, more than that. I mean, I, you know, part of my life has always been towards uh, supporting the community. I know that. Um, uh, and, I, and I still am. I'm still national spokesperson for Literacy Volunteers of America. Part of the from your book, by the way, go to help fight yes. illiteracy. Well, not fight illiteracy. Okay. We are campaigning. We are supporting. We are, we want to create a to more literate. Literacy. Yes. There you go. But you know, a very positive. Spin but that's important. It is, you know, because when, well, what you what, what you resist persists, and we we're fighting too many things, and you give power to that, and it becomes bigger, and then it consumes you. But uh, Aslan, my publisher, <clears throat> Aslan Publishing, and I, we give five cents from every book. To Literacy Volunteers of America, we give five cents from every book to the National Center for Family Literacy. And uh, from the cookies, we will donate 1% of our profits to uh, cities in schools, which is a dropout prevention program, very active in New York City. I'm on the board of directors of cities and schools. So that's a part of my life. It, oh, it has been. Um, I'm as noted in, in, in some communities for, um, for serving, for being a part of literacy, right. as I am for, um, for selling cookies. Do you miss the old days, though, where you were promoting big stars like Simon and Garfunkel? That's but, not shabby. But I'm promoting myself now. More fun? Much better than Simon and Garfunkel. You well, know? I don't know. They were pretty good. Well, but but I don't I don't have to deal with their personalities. I don't have to deal with their insecurities. I don't have to deal with their idiosyncrasies. See, I don't have any of that. I mean, I've got to be someplace. I'm there. i got to do a job. I go do the job. I don't have to approach myself lightly and say, well, Wally, do you, Wally, 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 would you, you think, will you please do this, Wally? No, I just go do what I got to do, you know? So, no, I don't miss anything. I am so happy living right now. I can't go back to 1961 or 1967. Um, I don't want to. I'm happy being right here today, February 22nd, 1995. It's a wonderful day. It's a beautiful day outside. I'm alive. I'm breathing. And so I am so immersed in the present and I think the mistake that so many people make and I did it for many years um, I always wished I'd done something mm-hmm. or wanted to be doing something else somewhere else with someone else right. so I missed the present I missed the precious present this is where the action is right this second okay so right this second let's take some phone calls for you. speak this to me <laughs> speak to me <laughs> talk to me I think I'll stay. I was just you know see if, if it yes, felt okay so I'll okay. stay you know <laughs> All right, here, here's Ann in Manhattan hi you're on with hello. Wally Amos hello Ann hello hello Ann oh, Ann can you hear us yeah, well no she can't hear us we can hear her. We're oh. going to work on it. Okay. Oh, okay. I just turned on my radio. Oh. oh. No, don't no, no. your radio. <laughs> no, no, but... We're working on it. All Jen. right. So I can hear you from over here. Fine. Oh, okay, Whatever. good. Whatever works. What's your question, Ann? Well, I was just wondering where we can find these cookies. Vending machines right now. Vending uh, machines. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, vending machines and maybe... Um, 
Some of the little mom and pop stores, some of the deli shops have them. Um, starting uh, the latter part of April, they'll begin showing up in all of the 7-Eleven stores. Um, 7-Eleven has just agreed to carry them, and we're kind of redesigning the package a little, so that'll happen. But right now, um, pretty much, it's, uh, it's vending machines. Or, Ann, I have a package I can sell you right here. <laughs> <laughs> How much do they sell for, by the way? Well, it, it's it's uh, 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 60 to 75 cents usually in a vending machine. No, nah, it's, it's, it's a two-ounce bag of no-nut cookies. There's no nuts in these. Why not? I like nuts. Well, because you can't sell them in a vending machine. Well, you can, but it's too expensive. Uh, ah. So things have to be priced uh, 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 appropriately and whatnot. So, but and soon uh, they'll be in you know in the Costco's and the price clubs of the world and and uh, in supermarkets and 7-Elevens and like that too. Great. Are there a variety of flavors? Right now, it's just one flavor, which is just chocolate chip. Okay. Yeah. That's not Thanks, Ann. No, that's that's excellent. As a matter of fact, you know. <laughs> Okay, here's uh, Lucy in Manhattan. Hi, Lucy, you're on New Hello? York feed. Hello, Lucy. Lucy in Manhattan Hello. with diamonds. Hello. Can we Hello, Lucy. Hello, Lucy. We're having a problem uh, at the audio control board. Uh, we will take care Hello? of it shortly. Oh, Lucy. Oh, Lucy. Lucy. Lucy, Lucy. 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 Lucy in the sky. She hung up. Oh, Lucy. Lucy's got a radio on now, I bet, though. Yeah, Lucy in the, in the sky radio. with diamonds. Oh, Lucy, we're having problems well, and we couldn't okay, hear you. Get this okay. Taken care of, mm -hmm. uh, audio technically, I I understand none of that stuff. I don't either. I just they tell me to talk, I talk, so mm. that's what I do. But um, how did you happen to start baking cookies? I mean, who, did well, anybody teach you? I mean, no. how do you learn to bake cookies other than from a mix, which I do? Well, my history with chocolate chip cookies actually started here in New York City. You know, I was raised in New York. I moved from Tallahassee, Florida, to New York City at the age of 12 years old. What was your family like? Um, they were they were nice people. My my mother and father, <laughs> yeah. my mother and father uh, divorced when I was 12 years old, and we lived in Tallahassee, Florida. So I came to New York City to live with my aunt Della, and we lived 161st Street between Amsterdam and Broadway, 567 West 161st Street. People are gonna now flock to that place. It's like a, a shrine. The water I don't think so. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Uh, that neighborhood has changed so much. I don't think a lot of people are gonna flock to it. <laughs> but but anyway, it was. Aunt Della, who first made chocolate chip cookies for me, and as a kid growing up, she would make them and I would eat them. And yeah. she had this little canister she would put them in, and sometimes to to kind of soften them up, she would she would slice up apples in them, and it, the moisture from the apples would be absorbed by the cookie, so it would have a softer texture. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I remember sitting in that little small kitchen that we had, and she'd mix cookies up, and and I'd watch her, and she'd finish, and I'd lick the spoon, and and then I'd I'd lick the bowl. That was the most favorite part. And cookies were baked, and hot cookies come out the oven and the, the, the aroma from the cookies just just filled the whole Nothing apartment like up you know and Nothing it was like so that. wonderful and she was such a neat lady that was my introduction really to chocolate chip cookies now she never she never told me how to make them I, I watched them many many times and never really wanted to know how to make them however uh, <clears throat> years later I'm in Hollywood California now and I'm a personal manager and a client comes in the office one day her name is Sherry Summers and Sherry had some homemade chocolate chip cookies. I hadn't had any in a long time. Aunt Della hadn't sent me any in, 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 in a long while. And I started eating those cookies, and I just went bonkers. I said, God, these are great. What, 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 in that, what, I said, where did you get? I want the recipe. Give me the recipe. Give me the recipe. All of a sudden, I wanted to make them. It's interesting that I never wanted to make cookies when I was with Aunt Della because she always made them. But now I want to make them, I and so. Eat them. <laughs> and so I'm watching the cameraman here. So so I asked um I asked <laughs> Sherry. I said, "Give me the recipe, Sherry," and I thought that uh, it was going to be some deep, dark, secret family recipe. And uh, so innocently, she just replied, well, the recipe is on the back of the Nestle chocolate chip package. <laughs> so, so um, I, no, it was not a disappointment at all. I went right to the store that evening, and I got some chips. And sure enough, on the back of that package, there was the recipe. And uh, uh, that kind of started me making them, made them for five years, gave them to friends, and then started selling them 20 years ago. Guess who's back? Lucy's trying to get Lucy. Lucy, are you there now? Yes, I am. Oh, Lucy, we're so happy you're here. <laughs> Ah. Sorry, I'm so glad you came into my life. Oh, Lucy sang the song. Lucy serenade me. Lucy in Manhattan with diamonds. Oh, my. <laughs> my yes, dear. Inspiration. What else do we have in common? Are you a tourist also by any chance? 
Am I a who? A Taurus. No, I'm a I'm a uh, I'm a Chevrolet. <laughs> I drive a full charge, but I'm not one, you know. I'm 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 cancer.